I'm kind of getting a bit bored and tired of these older DJs complaining about the scene and moaning and bitching and complaining about the new generation of DJs maybe being a little bit surface level and not digging deeper and all understanding the origins of the music it's like bro like you're a boomer you know like these new kids aren't going to be thinking like boomers they're going to be approaching things differently they're going to be coming with fresh new ideas and approaches some of them you might not like that's all reason behind it that's what keeps the scene fresh that's what keeps it alive because they do things differently i feel like as well intended some of these statements are they kind of just feel like it's an opportunity just to kind of preach and dunk and to try and act like you're the gatekeeper or the arbiter of what is good and bad techno and i find it fucking annoying but we're going to read it regardless. So this is courtesy of Sam Pagagini on his Instagram account. Some slides here where he's commenting on a scene. He says the question, why do we have to betray the incredible work that the great innovators, innovators, sorry, innovators, innovators, innovators have done? I can't speak for some reason. If you are paid 50 times as much as the resident DJ and you are booked to perform in the best clubs around the world, you have a moral responsibility, <laughs> honestly. Bro, I'm just trying to play some music and get high and get my dick sucked. Like, it's not, it's not that deep. No one's trying to change the world with a record. Like, let's be, let's be real. Let's all be very, very real. DJing is fun. It's good. Everyone gets to dance, but there's no moral responsibility. I'm playing because I enjoy playing music. You guys are here because you enjoy hearing this music. We're having a good time. We're going to go home to our family and friends. It's not that deep. But anyway, it continues. You have a moral responsibility. When I was a kid at the beginning of my career, whenever you start a sentence like this, you know you're probably going down the wrong route. When I was a kid, back in my day, but hey, let him run. I used to spend hours behind the DJ booth watching those 80s and 90s legends doing their thing. Well, that's the thing. You were you were a teenager in the 80s and 90s. These kids weren't born then. And back then, you didn't have the ability to go on social media. Nowadays, you can just watch the greatest DJs around in the scene doing their thing via your phone. You don't need to be in the booth and observing things. You can just watch a boiler room stream. So it's all good. I still remember very vividly my frustration as I realized once I was back home with all the amazing tracks still ringing in my ear that a lot of the time would pass for me to before I could actually get a copy of those records and that a lot of effort had to be made to find them. Again, I don't think there's any difference. It doesn't mean that you've come up better because you had to buy stuff on vinyl, because you had to order stuff via online, via mail order, because there was no online stores. That doesn't make you a better person. I don't understand this whole like, this whole like looking at the past through rose tinted glasses, like everything that was made in the past was good, is nonsense. There's a lot of shit tracks that were made back then too. A lot of people that were just grifting and waffling. Um, I don't know. I find all this stuff to be annoying. Um, it continues. That's when I understood why those artists were superstars. They would spend days looking for cool and exciting music for new sounds, always one step ahead of others. People do that now. That's how people record dig now. People record dig via Instagram, you know, so TikTok, and maybe even Snapchat, going on certain websites and checking their online stores, Juno, you know, all these proper places. Like it's, I don't know, listen to DJ mixes. It's just the same thing. It's the same thing. Nothing's really changed to be fair, just different mediums. To this day, that's a golden rule for me. When you have the name for yourself in this industry, you are lucky enough to receive many promos before they get officially released. And once they are available to everybody on the planet, I try not to play them anymore. So obviously he's just annoyed. He, he's kind of, it sounds like just annoyed. He's not the special one anymore. He's annoyed that promos go to anyone and everybody. He's annoyed that people that aren't DJs are playing the promos and you know and he's kind of a bit of a a bit of a snob it sounds like which makes sense when you're booming and you're looking down on people and being snobby or maybe it's just a money thing because you know sam pagagini is what probably like late 40s early 50s so you'd imagine probably he's not getting the same rates even though he probably should be considering his status and shit but he's also a bit of an older dj so probably the younger guys are coming up with maybe half of his talent half of his experience maybe a quarter of that and making five ten times more than what he's making so this might be just be a cope for the lack of money he's receiving in comparison to other djs which is another topic for another day but it continues being a label manager as well 60 percent of what i play comes from music i select from my own imprint to me it's unthinkable to hear commercial euro dance pop tunes played nowadays at some of the biggest festivals by some djs considered to be the best in the scene 
these commercial pop records, just to name one, it's Re it's a rainy day by Ice MC, which was super successful in the mainstream discos in the mid nineties, have never been played by those legends we all know so well, and none of those places where music was so consistent on a constant rotation ever made it to any top club list. That instead rightfully includes the institutions that made the history of our rave culture. Continuing on here. I, if I ever really want to play a track that's still undiscovered by younger generations, I'm looking to some of the craziest tunes on our legends used to span, used to spin, sorry, to give you an example. While the commercial discos were coming up with ISMC, the most authentic clubs would be raving to the sound of Alive from the New Wave EP and the then unknown Daft Punk. Why do we have to betray the incredible work of the great innovators um, have done? Miles, uh, Mills, sorry, Horton, Var, Garnier, Cox, um, Tengali, Deep Dish, Kitten, Alien, just to name a few, have built reputation and made the history of our club culture. By the way, all boomers, which is funny. Uh, why do we have to destroy this in such shallowness? If you are paid 10 times or even 50 times as a resident DJ to perform at this best clubs around the world, you have to have moral responsibility. So essentially, he's annoyed at all the pop edits on the dance floor. I understand. I get it. Some of the pop edits and remixes are annoying. They may be a little bit overdone because everyone plays them. And unfortunately, it's not really the problem of the songs. It's mostly the problem of the festivals booking the same type of DJs who play the same type of stuff. That's probably the issue, I feel like. I don't feel like people get bored of the songs. They get bored of the repetition of every DJ playing it. So maybe the festivals need to be a little bit more risk adverse, right? Instead of being risk adverse, I need to, you know, go out there and actually take some and maybe book some fresh people who maybe come with a new approach so that it would mix up the sounds because there's nothing more annoying than being at a festival from open to close and hearing the same time six times or the same song six times it can be super annoying and it can kind of kill your vibe i get it but on the flip side i actually like the introduction of pop records onto the dance floor because i feel like it makes the scene inciting again it's kind of boring to just hear like in my personal opinion the mix is good it is kind of boring to just hear unts 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 for like six plus hours sometimes mixing up and hearing a record that you might have heard on the radio can give you a feeling of like elation and glee because it's something familiar it's something kind of normy kind of mainstream that also is good because not everything underground is good same way not everything uh, you know mainstream is bad so I think it, it helps especially if you're in a brave or a party to kind of just soften the mood and make it a bit fun and to be honest as well, on the dance floor, I feel like regardless of what club you're at, as long as the music is good and maybe it aligns to what the theme of the night is, whatever, it really doesn't matter what you play. There should be no rules. The whole reason behind going to those type of places is that you want the DJ or the person that's playing to present stuff to you in a way that's going to make the night interesting and make you want to dance and shit. And sometimes it doesn't always have to be like white labels or underground stuff. It can be commercial things, but if it's done in a certain way, if it's sequenced in a certain way, mixed in a certain way, it can sound good. It can sound fresh. So maybe it's not even an issue of the pop edits. Maybe it's an issue with the way the people are playing it, with the amount of time just been playing in one night. But I honestly think it's a refreshing change because there was a time when it was starting to get boring. Even places like Bergheim, it was the same type of DJ playing, the same type of songs, the same type of level of seriousness and, you know, whatever, and maybe even aggression. Whenever you play some of these pop edits, they just help to soften the mood, make it a little bit more light, a little bit bubbly, a little bit more smiley. Like, it's impossible to be, like, seriously techno stomping from left to right in your fucking creepers when Britney Spears is playing. Yes, it's a bit naff, Yes, it's a bit cringy to hear like, you know, Shania Twain, you know, fucking techno edit. But at least it, you know, makes you smile. At least you know the words, you know. At least it maybe makes you remember a time when you heard that song for the first time anyway. It just helps to maybe mix, mix things up again and make it a little bit more interesting, especially if you are trying to make your set sound a bit groovy, which most people aren't. They're just trying to make it sound as dark and repetitive as possible to add to the feeling of highness that you're on with the drugs and shit. So I don't probably have a problem with it. And I think in general, even if they have a problem with it, it's this young people's time to do their thing. This whole generation of people who are playing with these pop edits and remixes, they're the ones who are dominating and they're the majority in these clubs now, as you'd imagine. So if that's the case, they're playing to their friends, they're playing to their peers. There's nothing wrong with that. I feel like if you're a 50 plus year old DJ who's still getting booked, you should be chuffed you're still relevant. You should be happy that still, despite your years and whatever, people still are curious to hear you play and want to see you play and come out to see your parties and whatever it may be. But 